Okay, good afternoon. It seems that it's me and then it's lunch, so I wonder how you are looking at me at this moment. But okay, I hope you are able to wait a couple more of minutes. Oh, thank you for uh, being invited to this session. And uh, by the way, I don't think anybody have said this yet, but this is a really beautiful place. And if you just kept on looking to the people on the, on the front and you neglected to look at the, the building itself, we are losing a lot. Probably some of the things that make cities much more interesting than technology. Right, we've been talking a lot about cities. And you've heard, sorry, <clears throat> and you've heard lots of different visions from uh, what we can do with cities, with applications, lots about cars. Um, what we've been doing in, in IT is slightly, uh, something slightly different from the, the problem of city itself. Um, although city is just a, a simple um, concept uh, which fits perfectly with the kind of environment we're talking about. I would probably recall the comment from the people of the internet of everything. And in fact, cities is just something that is coming to discussion because now we are having a huge amount of sensors and machine-to-machine -machine communications that allows us to get basically information from, well, roughly everything. So what we've been talking about uh, in, in, in Aveiro, uh, besides all the subjects that you've heard, um, it's mostly what can we do with that wealth of information? How can we transmit it? And you've seen here lots of ideas about that, how we can transmit it, the, the new nice antennas, the work on vehicular from Susanna, even using the smartphones. I'm now going to go a little more into something which is what we are going to do about it. And the concept that we've been talking about is something which we call small, smart cloud of things. So let's face it. I think everybody around here already knows lots of experience and, a lot, uh, and knows lots of data where you can fetch information from. So, I mean, why are we keep on discussing about these cities? Uh, the Barcelona experience, the Smart Center experience, the Porto experience, Lots of things, and we still keep on, you know, banging our head into the problem. Uh, it's some work still needs to be done. You know, you are coming here to sessions with technologists, and technologists saying to you, "Oh yeah, we can design your solution. Give us money, and we will put it in place." Great thing. We are the man, and we can do it. But for most of you, which are coming from, you know, planning from public service, from administration, from specific application environments, you really feel that's not really your, your life, your scenario. So what is the problem? And the problem is, from our point of view, simply the fact that if you are able to go, and definitely you, you, you have this, I hope, no, the laser doesn't really work. So the laser doesn't work. Um, so if you have all these devices that are providing that huge amount of information, every time that you collect that data, that data is basically stuck on its own silo. So what you have is a huge amount of disjoint applications managed by different parties, which each one is producing its own data, and then when you actually aim to do something with it, it's, well, a huge amount of work once again. What have we been doing? We've been addressing everything from the moment that you actually get that data on. So we assume that you still have the devices and it may even be transparent antennas. We don't really care about that for a transmission. We even have the aggregation platform, may even be something nice like what you saw from Susanna. We also really don't care about it. What we care about it, it's where the information goes after that. And what we are developing is systems basic, based in something called uh, enterprise service bus, communication buses. And over it, we are able to explore uh, service dynamics, which means that we actually aim to bring this city information and make, make it, bring it to the fingertips of the programmers 
with the amount, same amount of work that you would have in developing a web page. So this is basically our concept. And uh, I can now, now talk to you a lot about this. I can even show you, you know, a, a sort of a very simple uh, diagramic architecture of what we're doing. And this is something that follows a very peculiar name called Etsy machine to machine. I imagine that non-technologists don't care about it. Let's say it works nice. Let's also say that we are able to collect the events and all information that you want regardless of what kind of uh, 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 event we are talking, if it's multimedia, if it's an alarm, it is, if it's a temperature, if it is a movement of the car, we have a, a, a generic database architecture which is non-tied to any type of event. Let's then say we can even go into technology and say that after that we have some things which are, have very nice names of web service intelligent using a couple of, of, of technologies with once again big names like BPEL and we are able for a non-expert programmer to actually have a nice interface where it simply describes on let's say a, a flow chart what kind of, of functions that he wants. For instance, if the temperature uh, is too hot, please send an email for uh, uh, alarming the administrators of sensitive material. Or if the CO2 level is too large, please uh, send public broadcast about there's a danger for public health. So non-professional, in the sense of non-professional for IT, elements can uh, then look at the wealth of information that they receive from their city and actually start doing something with it. Let me give you a couple of examples of how we realize this. One thing that I'm, I'm, I like about this is that we were able to develop an a industry-funded project with, by the way, Portugal Telecom, so I think I managed to talk with about everybody in the panel now, um, where we actually um, deployed a sort of downgraded Smart Cloud of Things platform. It's downgraded because it's much more focused than uh, what we aim to do, which basically implies things like a, a smart service workflow design, smart interference, and uh, all this in a completely dynamic environment. We are not sure exactly what kind of services and what people are going to do with the information that we are providing them. Now, one of uh, the examples that we have, it's uh, a trend that, uh, as far as I can understand, it's becoming more and more common, which is city farming. You know, urban gardens, social gardens, kitchen gardens, all that kind of things. Um, first, I know nothing about gardening, okay? I know a couple of things about wines, but they usually don't qualify, they don't want me to work on them, I don't know why. Um, but this is a good example of a, a current social trend. And in many places in Europe, and even in Portugal, you are witnessing you know, the, the small gardens inside the town. It's very easy, and we have this running in Coimbra, actually, to provide monitoring of these kind of gardens, and then to provide smart actuation of it. If it's a closed garden, you can eventually turn, you know, the, the water flow, if the, the plant is getting too dry, or you can uh, uh, run a shade and so on. And if you are collecting these as a sort of social environment, then you can even fetch this information from some sensors to another, and some strategies of some uh, uh, users to uh, uh, promote development of another ones. And you can even create nice social games, especially for kids, which look very nice. I mean, we can do this very easily. This is an example of uh, uh, our hot house that we are doing this. And uh, the, the sensors are really not visible, but uh, they basically are sensing everything. But you can build this according to the needs of, uh, of your application and what kind of uh, city farming you are talking about. But since this has been mostly uh, a scenario of traffic, let me go to uh, pothole monitoring. You know, the very famous Portuguese buracos, 
okay? So basically, we also played with this, and uh, we injure ourselves just putting a very uh, um, small sensor, actually quite cheap in all, in all cars, and we actually connect them, and they have a, a sort of opportunistic, measure, opportunistic strategy using either 3G or Wi-Fi to uh, upload the data. Uh, and then we are able to correlate the information from many sensors. Okay, this is a, an example, and uh, I, I wonder if somebody from Aveiro is here, because I'm not sure if they would like about this picture. Um, so you can see the, 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 the size of the holes uh, and the, 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 by the color and the number of them by the, you know, the small balls. Uh, the green lines were the, the lines that, the, the rows that have been transversed during that. So there is at least a very uh, significant area in Aveiro that needs to be, you know, maintain, maintained. Okay, that's it. I think we are now two minutes over time. So uh, uh, I think I will finish here and thank you for your attention.